In this video, brought to you by Audible, I'm going to show you how cheap department store makeup brushes are like magic for dry brushing. I talked about this, I don't know, maybe a couple of months ago, about dry brushing and how it's really a good thing and how you can use them. And during that video, which, you know, but ciao, um, I talked about my friend Terry Latorco. She's got a YouTube channel and she uses inexpensive makeup brushes. And I mentioned them in the video, but I didn't own any as I'm not generally, you know, a makeup guy. And so um, after that video went out and everything, I thought, you know, I should stop by some department store and, uh, and, and pick, some up, pick some up, see what, they, what they're like. So I went to my local Walmart, but from what I understand, you can find these in drugstores like Walgreens or CVS. You can find them in department stores like um, Target, uh, probably even grocery stores, you know, if they've got a makeup aisle or whatever, they probably have these types of brushes and they're super cheap. These brand are called e.l.f., which maybe is fitting for using them to paint potentially fantasy models, but they come in lots of different, you know, sizes. There's like a, a big honking one here. There's a kind of a little floofy one here and some that are, this one's kind of got like a flat. Most of them are generally round, but sometimes they are for different applications of makeup, I'm assuming, a little bit more chiseled, but still very, very kind of fluffy. And that's really what makes the magic happen. Now, many of us are used to normal dry brushing, where you're either using an old brush that's kind of had to be sent out to pasture, and by pasture, I mean you start using it as a dry brush because now it's all you know, frayed and messed up, or you're using an actual hobby brand, purpose-made um, dry brush. And those are still very useful, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in the future. But these are really useful for a lot of things that maybe you haven't tried to dry brush before. When you're using a very small dry brush, they are very, very great for getting into little nooks and crannies to do some dry brushing. If you have, let's say, some sort of barbarian, and that barbarian has a chainmail kind of thing hanging off of his butt or whatever, or you know, down like there's a loincloth between the legs, you don't want to use a brush this big to try to get the silver onto that you know, metallic uh, chain mail. You're going to need a really small brush, and that's where it's not a bad idea to try to have either some old brushes that are now becoming your dry brushes or some actually purpose-made um, hobby brushes. But these big honking things, and let me be perfectly honest with you, these are probably available at the dollar store too, but I think this one cost a dollar. This one cost a dollar. This one might have been two. The most expensive one was this big, big, big honker that was like six bucks. But I can tell you right now that I've paid way more than six dollars for hobby brushes at the hobby store. So these are also quite cheap in comparison to what you might be used to. But like I said, I was going to start showing you some cool things that you don't normally do with your normal hobby style dry brushes. And that is painting, let's say, a piece of terrain. Okay, so I've got this piece of terrain here. This is an older kind of games workshop piece of uh, rubble. You know, it's like a, what do you, it's like a, a barricade, uh, improvised barricade. I don't know if they sell this anymore. I've got a whole bunch of stuff in the way here, so I'm gonna try to scoop some of this out. But I've really quickly just painted it up uh, just with some like rust and some gray and some dark and some blue for the destroyed motorcycle. And when you're working on, just as a side note, when you're working on little pieces of terrain like this, this is a great place to uh, practice your uh, wet blending. Just to, uh, you know, throw down some blue, and then while it's still wet, throw down a little bit of gray, and just kind of go to town, and just have fun with it like that. You can do some kind of cool things. But when there is a big conflagration, when there is a big battle, when there is a big building that has fallen down, if you're doing a sci-fi battle and you are doing terrain, you want a big honking brush like this, and I'll tell you why. It's because everything gets dust on it. As the, the, bat, the dust settles, as they say, after the battle, it lands places. And dust, in general, in sci-fi, is kind of a gray color. So when you make a piece of terrain like this, it looks okay, but it's really going to get tied together once you go at it with some gray and a big, fat, dry brush like this. So you can do two things. Either you can try to use a normal pot, which will work for the smaller ones, certainly. This is, this is fine, you can get that in there. And I like to dry brush straight out of the pot. It's, I would not usually, if you're gonna be doing some dry brushing, as I think I've said in the past, don't put it on your wet palette, and then because you want the dry paint to be dry. You don't want it to be extra wet because then it's hard to 
dry brush with wet. Anyway, um, but in some situations, like that's not going to work, right? Um, so in that situation, then we maybe we put some onto a piece of plastic. Um, this is the container that one of these big honking brushes came in, and so I'm going to repurpose it as a dry palette. So in this situation, I'm going to use a little bit of this. This is a Vallejo model color, and I'm just going to put a glob of a light gray on there. There we go. And then big honking brush, okay, and I'm just going to just dab and just get a little bit. And then I'm going to go over here to my paper, which I should have set up earlier. Make sure my brushes don't go away. And I'm just going to, like I said, I'm just big, big strokes. Big strokes. And then I take this here and I just start going to town over it. And it's just big, big. I'm actually hearing a little bit of static electricity. That's how big and floofy this brush is. But you can get amazingly soft. Like it looks like dust has been falling on this for quite some time and it's just hitting all of the raised edges and it's taking me very little time and very little paint as a matter of fact. I can grab a little bit more here and again I like to either go circle or X's but if you just go one direction I don't know that it works as well so um, so I'm getting that you can see that it's already hitting all the raised edges and I'm just scrubbing it back and forth and this would be, this would take a really long time if I was trying to do this with, say, this brush. You can see the differences here. These two brushes, um, you know, you're talking about a very long time to do that. And this has, with this brush, taken me maybe, what's it taking me? A minute? Now, you might be able to see this here. I don't, you see the hair that's coming out of there? That will happen. These brushes, because they are cheap as chips, uh, as they say overseas, they are also kind of garbage. My friend Terry mentioned they are, as makeup brushes, kind of terrible because they do have a tendency to shed. But when they're this cheap and I'm going to treat them this poorly, then I kind of don't care, you know, because there's a lot more bristles where that came from. And I just have to make sure I don't leave any bristles onto the thing that I'm painting, you know, when I'm done. And, um, and then we go. So right there, I have turned this from kind of poorly block, uh, you know, blocked out paint with um, a little bit of practice in, in the uh, wet blending. And then I threw a wash over it, which I let dry, like a dark brown. And um, now I just did this, and that's really kind of tied it all together, in my opinion. It really looks now like it's been sitting there a long time. And if I want to go back now with a white, I could do that just in the highest parts and that kind of stuff. But just a big, big, big brush like this is something that can allow you to, in terrain, really, really weather it and make it look amazing very quickly. But it's not just for terrain. You can use it for lots of things. This is a statue, a little Cthulhu statue that I did that I primed black. It's from a board game. Some Cthulhu board game that I've been having. It's, had, it's been in the basement for years. And I've always wanted to use, it came with a bunch of these little dudes, but I've always wanted to use one or a couple of them as a statue. So recently I primed them black because they were kind of in a green plastic that had had like a black or a brown wash on it. So I primed it black and then I used some medium gray and this big brush. And this that you see here, all this definition and all that stuff, took about a minute, maybe a minute, maybe a little bit less. I did have to go back in with a smaller brush like this so that I could kind of get into down here by the butt a little bit. I mean, you can see that it's darker down there, maybe. Yeah, you can see how it's kind of darker down there because I can't get all the way down. But in the little areas that are not too little, not like really, really tiny, but in a lot of little areas, I was able to get him finished up really quick. And that was very cool. Um, another thing that you can do, again, let's say, let's take one of these pieces. So this is like a 3D printed, like concrete barrier that I've primed kind of a medium gray. And now I'm thinking to myself, I think it needs a little bit highlight, a little white. So I'm going to take some, this is from Monument. And I'm going to take a little bit of their white. And let's see if you can see this. It's just a little glob of white that I'm using on this piece of plastic, which I will throw away. I'm just dabbing it a little bit and then dabbing it off and rubbing it around. Now let's see if we can see this here. And then it can be subtle sometimes, but just a nice white dry brush on the raised parts over the top of, you know, something that is 
a little bit more of a gray color because you want to just give it some highlight can really add a little bit to it. It didn't do a ton, but it did a bit. And I can get back in there and even go into wet, more wet brushing, I guess you call it, where you don't brush it off on the paper and just kind of go to town like that and try to get it on the raised areas. In this situation, because it's such a light white and I'm throwing such a, or it's such a light gray, the, the primer that I put over this, but now you can definitely see in comparison, there's definitely some change there and it works out pretty well. Here's an orc. This is just a black painted old timey, um, I wanna say it's from probably Blood Bowl actually, isn't it? So it's just an old Blood Bowl orc and you can see he's black, just totally primed black. And I'm just gonna take, <laughs> I'm just gonna take what I had before. Little 25 millimeter um, bases are still kind of loose in these. So you're gonna wanna grip the sides. This is kind of what I did with my Death Watch models. I primed them all black after I built them, and then I used not a white like this, but I used a uh, gray and one of these big brushes and just brushed them straight down. You can see here I'm brushing from the top down because I'm trying to fake the light, hitting the tops, you know, from the sky. And again, it's very difficult kind of to get into this sort of edge with a brush this large because it's basically the size of his entire body. But I can do some pretty cool work back here. This is basically almost like your Zenithal highlighting. If you prime black and then take white and just do this, you could do some Zenithal prime uh, highlighting. The Death Watch that I'm talking about, you can see the dark gray that I did instead of edge highlighting in these pictures here. And that was using basically a big brush like this and I think using this in some of the nooks and crannies. Using these incredibly cheap, small little brushes can really make it so that you can get some amazing effects very quickly and you don't have to feel like you are, you know, uh, getting into every little thing and blocking everything out. You, it's anybody, literally anybody, can put some paint on there, brush it off, and then just go back and forth from a couple different angles and get something that looks like this or get something that looks like uh, Mr. Uh, Greed and Scaly there. Or you can really kind of make your terrain really kind of look great and weathered very, very quickly. And all you have to do is go to the department store, buy some makeup brushes, and kind of get to scrubbing. That's all you got to do. Do you like to listen to audio while you're sitting and painting your models? I generally do. Most people do. Some people listen to music. Some people listen to podcasts. I generally like to listen to audiobooks. And the sponsor of today's video is Audible, who are the leader in audiobooks. And if you are a viewer of this channel and you're interested in a 30-day free trial of Audible, you can just go to the link below here, audibletrial.com slash tabletopminions. You'll get a 30-day free trial of Audible and a free book, which you'll get to keep even if you decide not to go on with your subscription. There are 180,000 different books within their system. Uh, including, if you're interested, a lot of the Games Workshop books, the Black Library stuff. I was literally last night listening to, I'm about maybe two hours out from the end of the first Horus Heresy book, which is called Horus Rising, I believe. And it's the story of kind of explaining to you about the Primarchs and the early Space Marines and the this and that and all that kind of stuff and how things kind of eventually, spoiler alert, went wrong and then turned into what we know today as Warhammer 40,000. But there are not just those books and not just sci-fi books and not just fantasy books. There's educational books, there's history books, every little different type of thing that you can think of, plus tons of originals that they're doing as well. All these things are available. You can put on your headset and listen to them on pretty much darn near any device out there. So if you're interested, link below, audibletrial.com slash tabletop minions, and you viewers will get a, three, a free 30-day trial, which you don't have to keep, but you will get a free book, which you will get to keep.